how to find and wholesale the pre-foreclosure list. Guys, there are a fortune in the pre-foreclosure list in your market right now. And heck, every single month there are pre-foreclosures being listed, being put on the court system for you to wholesale and make a ton of money. These are a very lucrative list that you are probably not pulling. And you probably, if you are pulling, you're not getting results because you don't know how to talk to these type of sellers. There is so many deals to be done with this specific list. And now what we're going to do today is really show you exactly the power of pre-foreclosures, explaining it to you, and most importantly, showing exactly how you can have a conversation with your motivated sellers if they're in a pre-foreclosure situation so they can trust you, be your competition, and how you can make a ton of money in wholesaling real estate. Guys, this is Zach Ginn. Rick in here. And uh, let's break this all down and let's get it going. So uh, first question we got to talk off the bat is, what are you doing in a sling here? I uh, just uh, had some arthroscopic surgery on my left shoulder. So when you get old like me, you got to uh, get stuff fixed. So it's, it's a good thing. And uh, it's coming back. I'll have this thing off uh, in like another week. So just FYI, if anyone's asking. So uh, let's break this down. Let's get into probate, uh, pre-foreclosures and... Uh, Kind of spoiled it there. Yeah. Um, so I'll, let's say off the bat, you know, uh, pre foreclosures are really good. Mm -hmm. But the real power I have found with pre foreclosures is when you can find a probate with a pre foreclosure. Yeah. And that's the one thing I'll tell you, you know, before we break this down, is like pre foreclosures are just going to be a part of the problem for a lot of your motivated sellers. And so th the truth is, if you have a code violation, it's probably got a pre foreclosure on it. If you got a, guy not paying his federal taxes, he's probably not paying his mortgage, right? Like everything kind of stems to if you're in a financial situation and you're going to be a motivated seller, you're probably in a pre-foreclosure. So pre-foreclosure is a root of a lot of things. Uh, the only thing that's more of a root of things is like high equity, I guess, but like it, it's, it's amazing. And so these sellers are super urgent. They want to get rid of the property fast and you're going to do some sifting. I ain't going to lie. There, there's going to be some uh, sifting you have to do with the seller, like these type of sellers. But I think it's going to be really important for us wholesalers to know about it. So let's kind of talk about this. Let's have a conversation and uh, see what we can do to become the best wholesaler possible. So first and foremost, <clears throat> what is a pre-foreclosure, right? There, there's a lot of definitions of this. And in my personal opinion on a pre-foreclosure, a pre-foreclosure is somebody really, if I'm going to do the, <clears throat> the Zatkin definition, it's somebody that hasn't paid two or three mortgage payments. I, I mean, really, I think 120 days is like the when you start getting mm -hmm. uh, kind of the list pendants, you get the notice of defaults. And, but really, for like the, the beginner wholesaler watching this, you are in a pre foreclosure when you're two or three payments behind on your mortgage, right? Yeah. It's, uh, so, foreclosure is the process where the house is taken away. And that happens in what they call a foreclosure auction. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people are like, what's pre-foreclosure? The special foreclosure? No, it's just the very beginning stages. So that's where the word pre comes in. And there is a foreclosure process. Until they are found guilty, so to speak, they're not technically foreclosure. So they have to, the banks have to build their case up to them, prove everything. Most people don't show up to court. And then they get a default judgment. And from there, they set a foreclosure auction. So that's where we kind of come up with the pre. And guys, I mean, we'll talk about a little bit more. If you guys go to your courthouse and ask for the pre foreclosures, you're probably going to get a blank stare because like, well, it, it's a yeah. generic term we use. So we'll, I'm, we'll go over it. I mean, whenever you want to go over it, we'll tell you what to request depending on what part of the country you're in. But if you ask for a pre foreclosure list from the courthouse, you're going to get a real like strange stare at you nine times out of 10. Exactly. So let's kind of break down exactly, you know, what is a pre foreclosure and then how to pull the foreclosure list, right? Yes. So let's kind of break this down just so you understand it. Cause if you understand it, then you can explain it to your sellers a lot better. So let's talk about this, right? First and foremost, the pre foreclosure process. Now at freeholcing.com, our free real estate wholesaling course, which we have said probably 5,000 times today. Um, I mean, even outside of this conversation, Free, freewholesaling.com is our course where we teach you how to wholesale real estate absolutely for free. Now, in this course, I kind of teach you basically everything. But specifically, we have a lot of infographics. We have a lot of breakdowns. And we really share exactly the whole process of pre-foreclosure. So 
Let's go to freehosting.com and look at the graphics we have in there. I'll give you a little sneak peek. It's a free wholesale course. <laughs> <laughs> like, and it costs you money. Jay's Louise. So uh, this is the pre-foreclosure process. And so let's kind of make this a little smaller here and uh, show you. So this is all at freehosting.com, by the way. Uh, but this is the pre-foreclosure process. So let's, let's go to the top. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, so th this is the pre-foreclosure process. So let's have a conversation and, and really break this down so you can understand it. Uh, and most importantly, you can tell a motivated seller about this. Uh, so you're good to go. Now, go to freehosting.com, bottom right-hand corner if you want to screenshot this. Uh, but let's have a conversation here. So pre-foreclosure, there is basically five steps to it, uh, more or less from left to right, start to finish. Uh, but basically starts from the beginning. This is going to be what we call pre-foreclosure, pre right? Basically, when you don't pay your mortgage payments, like after the first month, nothing happens. Okay. Like I, I think a lot of people think like a crazy, insane thing happens. It really doesn't. Okay. Like, I mean, no. And so you don't pay your mortgage payment. They're just going to give you a letter like, hey, you may have forgotten. Maybe you got overdrafted. Like they, they're, they're nice. Right. But after about three, two or three payments, the bank's like, okay, this isn't a mistake. This, this person is just not going to pay us. You know, I don't think banks are evil people for doing this because they loaned out money, right? So what do we got to do here, right? Like what's what's the process? So after about 220 days, the bank's lawyers will file a notice of default, basically putting on notice or public records that the person is default of their agreement. They literally wrote a contract called a mortgage. Mm -hmm. So what contracts are, I don't get the whole contract law thing, but yeah, I'm forming contracts to a mortgage. And then the banks sell those off to other people. But like, I'm not getting into that. Let's not get into legalities. But basically, after 120 days, the bank files a notice of default. Sometimes it's called a notice of foreclosure. Uh, sometimes it's a list pendants, right? Uh, which is basically affording an action for a lawsuit uh, type situation. So it's called the pre-foreclosure. This is what we're talking about right here. This number two part, right? Pre-foreclosure. Now, in between pre-foreclosure, let's skip the next one. Let's go down to auction date set. So they, they basically file a foreclosure proceeding. Mm -hmm. And then at the end of the foreclosure proceeding, when the judge finally gets to it, because it takes them a while, they say, okay, here's the auction date in July 1st. This is when it's getting auctioned off. And basically how that works is if $100,000 is owed to the bank, and let's say the property is worth one forty, dollars they'll probably auction it off. Maybe it sells for one thirty. dollars Bank gets their hundred grand, and they get the rest of the to the seller. And so that, that's how they do They just want their 100K. They don't care about anything else, right? They just want to make sure that their loan that they sent out is protected. That's how they work, right? And they'll set an auction date and then boom, it gets foreclosed, auctioned, or the bank tanks it over with an REO, which we'll explain later. But the reason why I, I skipped this is because in between when the notice of default is filed mm -hmm. and the auction date is set is the special thing called, I call it, me and Rick call it, the wholesaling window of opportunity. This is our opportunity in wholesaling to actually go market to these sellers, sign a contract, get a buyer through, assign it, close, and boom, you save the seller from really a, some PTSD from a foreclosure, ruining their credit, ruining their reputation, and really something that's publicly embarrassing, being having a foreclosure happen, right? There's also what we call the short sale time window. If you got a short sale, uh, that's for another thing. So Basically, this is the window of opportunity, right? Like, I mean, is that the way you define it too? Yeah. So at, at this point, you, you have to understand uh, the bank doesn't own the pro. A lot of people think the bank owns the note. Uh, they were, they're, they're just oh. the service providers. So a, a big fund on Wall Street owns these and Fannie and Freddie may back them all up, but the banks are paid to service them. So the reason why you can never get in touch with the bank or like you can't do anything is their job, they they could care less how long it prolongs if they're getting paid either way. Yeah. So yeah, you, you have to understand that. I mean, so you gotta understand everybody in pre-foreclosure, you're all gonna find this out. And those of you that are doing this, you already know this. People in pre-foreclosure, they have this deniability that it's it's not just a few, it's most of them. And they're all in denial. You know, it's not just a it's not just a river. Everyone's like, no, 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 it's okay. And what me and Zach are talking about is the sweet spot. You have to find people in pre-foreclosure that actually want to get helped. 
most people, when they get the first, they already know they're stressed out. Um, and they know they're behind in payments. That's stressful or not. And then they get these terrible notices. And then once they start getting phone calls in that sweet spot that we just had up on the screen, that's just when they reach out and they go, listen, I need to solve this problem. That's the ones you want to work with. The ones that want to go all the way to the end of the auction date and then call you like a week before the, the foreclosure auction. Those are the ones you want to avoid at all costs because they're just going to waste your time. Remember, most people know they have a problem. You got to find the ones that go, listen, I have a problem. I want to fix it. Why? Foreclosure is embarrassing. Uh, they're basically, it goes on their credit for 10 years and actually can be renewed for another 10 years. So it's going to destroy the credit. Number two, they're not going to be able to buy another house usually within the next five years, depending on how much credit repair they do. Number three, they actually can get a deficiency judgment, which means if it was upside down $80,000, an attorney can take that judgment. And if you have a W-2, which most people do, they can now go and just pull it out of your paycheck. So it never goes away. The ones that try to act like it never goes away, it's just a lie they tell themselves. I always try to find the ones that want to help. And here's the key, guys. You can't make them help themselves. But there's some people, and after like that two or three months, they're like, wait a minute. I'm not making a mortgage payment. Nothing really bad's happening. This is a great deal. Why would I ever change it? And for the next six to nine or 12 months, those people are almost impossible. And they'll always call you at the very end. Hey, Zach, remember you said you'd help me out? Like, I I'm ready to go now. I'll sign anything. Why? Because they're getting kicked out of the house in a week. Yeah. And listen, you can save some, but by that time, there's usually very little money into it. The house is in horrible shape. The vultures are circling around it and there's no money to be made. And you got to spend money on a lawyer. And if you're a new wholesaler, you do not want to be in that. You want to be in that first, what we call 90, maybe 120 day window and find people that actually want help. This is the hardest part of foreclosures because they all talk a great game. But here's what happens. You start dealing with someone nine, 10 months. You probably put like 50 hours into it. They're never even going to do a deal with you anyway. So find that sweet spot where they want to rectify the situation and they actually humbly say, I need some help. And that's where I make the most money in any type of pre-foreclosure. And if you understand the sweet spot, you'll know it. Because if you don't, these people will drag you on forever. Can you imagine dealing with 30 people that drag you on a year? It's so, torture. Yeah. So there goes conversations like, so in the process, let's go over some theoreticals here, right? Now, I, I will tell you this, and I am not a lawyer. I've said this many times, but if your seller, okay, is let's say auction date set, can I still wholesale it? Because you know why I get asked that question? Because basically all the sellers want to sell when the auction date gets they, set. Every one of them. And so it's like, well, oh, 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 this is a magic situation. And so it depends on the state. Here's the problem. If I'm in California, I know guys that did this. I had a, um, there was this, Funny fellow in uh, Footwork Plus. He's actually a rapper. Um, but, you know, I, he doesn't want to be disclosed. Um, but he was in California and he just calls pre foreclosures, cold calls them. I'm like, what? And he basically, you know, that's why I'm not publicly saying his stuff. He would lock it up the day before the foreclosure. He knows title companies and lawyers that will go extend it for like 60 days the day before it. Uh huh. And he was cleaning up because he he had that little niche. Because in California, where freedom is free, um, the the best state for uh, things, um, you can basically you're about to get foreclosed on tomorrow. Bank's gonna say, yeah, sc screw the company. We'll just extend it, right? Even though a judge said it, we're just gonna extend it, and they'll extend it for sixty days. That's California. It's crazy, right? Um, that's the only state I know that does something like that, right? For a pre foreclosure. And he was cleaning up there and he still is cleaning up. He, I think he's over like almost a quarter million this year right now with it. Like insane. Right. And he only started wholesaling a year and a half ago, but uh, funny stuff, but like you can't do that in every other state. And so let's, let's use Georgia, for example, right? Mm -hmm. Attorney state a day before the auction. There's not much you can do, man. I, just being honest. Very, and here, here's the challenge right tough. before the auction. You got to understand most of these people have ignored all court dates, all hearings. And so when the judge passes the gavel in the final judgment in the court size, it's done. So to unwind a sale date usually involves a legal maneuver, which requires money from an attorney. Everyone says, Oh, I can fix it. It's 
it's tough. And then the other part is, is there any money left in it? Because by the time you rack up the attorney's fees, all the late fees, and then all the other liens against the house, a lot of times it's not worth it. And then you like, you have to run around. So if you prioritize your life and your time and you don't run around for other people, like shoving stuff, do it. Don't do it for these people. Because honestly, are you going to lay out $1,500 for an attorney? And the attorney, it's at best, at best, maybe 50% of the time they'll get it done. And remember, they still have to cooperate with the attorney. So I like to catch them when they're early because some people, you got all know people who deny a problem all the way till the very end. And that's the problem with like foreclosure. And they're like, well, you know what? I'm not making, I don't have to pay anything. And then when I made the comment about like the salt, they always call you in the virtual uh, vulture circle. What do I mean by that? Once an auction date set, about 30 investors will descend on the property and they walk around it. They take pictures, they peek through the window. It's extremely intimidating. And that's usually when they freak out and like, get me out of this mess. I go, remember what I told you in the beginning? Now is the time to solve the problem. We have options. At the end, a judgment is the worst thing you can get against you. It's hard to overcome a judgment. By the way, nobody just magically undoes a, ju a judgment and eventually you will have to pay the piper. You will never be financed for anything. You're not going to get another mortgage. And honestly, renters now are having a tough time because credit is the number, credit and income are the two determiners when you do rent. So like, listen, if I had kids, like some people a little bit more responsible than others, but like, I will tell you this, if you think you can talk them into cooperating with you, you can't, you just got to learn the skills of how to talk to people and be completely educated on the foreclosure process for your state. So guys, every state's a little bit different. You can go to your state websites and find out the actual foreclosure process. Or if you really want to know more, go down to your court and ask, can you walk me through the foreclosure process? That way you can be of service to your clients instead of going, I don't know. I got to check on that. I don't know. I got to check on that. And I love foreclosures, but if you catch them early, it is massive motivation to fix a problem. But you ever had a problem? You go, nah, I don't have a problem. It's going good. It seems good for three or four months until the gavel gets dropped on you. And then when those vultures start circling, that's when they always call. They go, man, there's like 10 people at my house taking pictures. Help me. It happens a lot. Yeah. And I go, and I try to go, listen, I told you earlier, like I can only work with you in the beginning. I wish you the best of luck. You're a good person. You just got to make better choices. And I move on. That's it. I, I'm not going to run around my head cough, pay $1,500, beg a lawyer to do all this stuff. And are they really going to cooperate with you in the end? Is there any money left? I hate the end of a foreclosure. It's a pain in the butt. And that's where you don't want to be. So especially if you're a newbie, if you can catch them within that first 190 to 100 days, that's usually when you have your most success. Because here's the one thing that pre-foreclosures give a new wholesaler, and nobody ever talks about this. You get time. You guys don't have a lot of cash buyers. These people need some time to move out with their dignity. So it's a beneficial to the seller that's in pre-foreclosure and it's a benefit to you, the new wholesaler. You're not as stressed to go find a buyer in two weeks. Sometimes you have up to 60 or 90 days to find a buyer and it's not very stressful. And that's why I like to do them. And guys, when people are motivated and they take the right actions, you can help them out. When they deny it all the way to the end, I don't want you to stay to the end. Exactly. So again, guys, this is the process. Tony, most sellers will deal with you on the right hand side here, three to seven days for auction. Screenshot this if you want. This is all at freelancing.com, by the way. But from the beginning, seller misses the payments before pre foreclosure happens. Then we have what we call the wholesaling window time of opportunity. Then the auction date gets set. It gets a lot harder to do once that happens. And then the bank wants to sell for what is owed. Most sellers deal with you three to seven days before the auction. And then most importantly, there are these things called redemption periods if it's for taxes. Um, I believe some foreclosure happens, but it's mostly tax uh, redemption periods, uh, but it's, it's insane. Um, so redemption periods is another thing we'll get into another day, but it's, <laughs> it's a big thing. Uh, so what I can tell you guys is that is the whole process. And to let you know, is you don't need to talk to your seller in that process. Like my other seller, like, oh, I got... You know, they gave me all these scary letters. What am I doing? Well, have they filed any lawsuit against you? No? Okay. Well, don't worry. Well, that means I could still help you out this process. We can put an agreement up. We buy it. And it still won't hurt your credit. Now, remember, and then they'll go and say, XX, XY question. That's like, whoa, right? 
Hey, that's a great question. I don't know specifically the answer to that because I'm not a lawyer and I can't give law advice, but our title company has a lawyer on there and he's actually the one that will process the entire closing with the title company. Let's reach out to him when we get an agreement and we can go from there. And boom, you're good to go. So uh, just FYI, that, that process does get a little different. Uh, but honestly, pre-foreclosures are amazing right now for wholesaling. And you got to be going after them. 2024, less and less wholesalers are talking about them or doing them. And there's just, it's amazing. So question here is how to find pre-foreclosures. Well, pre-foreclosures can be found either on two uh, specific ways. You can either get the free way or the paid way, right? So the free way is at the government, right? So you literally go to the clerk of the court. You can go for the list pendant section. You can go to the notice of default section or the notice of foreclosure, whatever one it's called. Look for those filings. And then it'll say John Smith. And then it'll say Bank of America, mortgage services or whatever, right? And then you click it. There's usually a property attached. One, two, three, Main Avenue. John Smith is the seller. And then boom, you will skip trace them at like two people search, cyber background checks for free. Boom, you can text the guy, call him. We'll talk about the marketing uh, messages on there uh, and how to market to these sellers. But really, that's the, the gist of how to do it for free. Now, is it the best way? When you got no money, yes. But there are a lot easier ways to do it. Personally, for me, you know, for most sellers, I'll just use a paid list because the paid list does the same thing as the free list, by the way. So you might be like, wait, what do you mean? You can go to listrei.com right now, L-I-S-T-R-E-I.com right now. Go to, I don't know, Memphis, Tennessee. Click the pre-foreclosure button. And it'll pop up all the pre-foreclosures. Because what it does is it has an API with the government lists. And it will pull all the uh, foreclosure filings, you know, some faults and all these things. And then it will just go basically scrape the data for you and give it to you. It's all done automatically easy. And that's a really cool service these paid services do. Uh, ZachDay.com, Batch Leads does that really well. And also, most importantly, uh, re really any paid service can do it. It doesn't even matter. Um, so I I'll tell you, DMZach.com is really good with this too. I mean, they're, they all can do it, right? And, and they're all, their accuracy is pretty much 100% when it comes to if there's any deviations with the pre-foreclosure list with them. So honestly, it's not that crazy to do, right? Um, so that's how you pull the pre-foreclosures, the free and the paid way. Uh, preferably if you have a bigger operation, the paid way for free, do it the free way. I'm telling you, you don't have to pay for this information. So it eliminates your excuse for not pulling this list because it's free. Yeah, it's free. I, I, and listen, you know, I always say, you know, overcome uh, resistance with persistence. This is the one you don't have to do it because it's a public lawsuit. They have to announce it to the world. So if you're struggling to find this, it just means you're using the wrong definitions. So we've already kind of shared in this video which ones to use. Go back and replay it. But this list has to be public. It's a public lawsuit. So you don't have the privacy versus um, uh, the privacy policy versus being public information argument. Now you're going to get that on code violations and a lot of the other ones we talk about. But this one, if you're struggling to get the pre foreclosure list, you got to get through it because it's not hard. It's supposed to be extremely public. That's the whole point of a court proceeding. So find a way to get it. You can always go in house to your court system. If you struggle and you're not tech savvy, just walk in there if you can. Number two, you can make a phone call. Number three, a lot of times, if you know how to navigate the websites, you can look at this information online. Most of it's public data. Why? Because the old school me, I actually used to go to these auctions. I, do, I could write a book on what happens in these auctions. It was like old school, but they got wise and they made it where it's private online. So anybody in the world can bid on these. This is why you do not want to bid on foreclosure auctions. You're bidding against people in foreign countries. And sometimes they just want to move money. They don't even care what price points they are. So you rarely get a deal in a foreclosure auction. Those of you are like, what do I do a foreclosure auction? I want to do that. So Those for buyers sometimes. Like here's the cool part of foreclosure auction. Yes, there's a lot of international. There's a lot of, other, but that's, it's different every state, right? But if you saw that John Smith Home Flipper LLC bought four houses at one auction for cash and he's flipping them, maybe you should get his phone number, cyber, cyber background checks. And mm -hmm. hey, I saw you bought, I was actually at the auction. I saw you bought a bunch of them. I'm actually a wholesaler. Are you looking to buy any more of my I, deals? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, I just, I bought, I, I just want you to understand, like, I, I know. I didn't grow up like this. You didn't grow up like this. There's people out here. There's 
you know, I just bought seven properties last week, just like no problem. Like, yeah, you know, like four million this week in real estate. And that's why I just, I'd buy four or five million in rentals every week, just right. You know what I mean? Like, there's people in your city. Oh, there's nobody. It was like, there's nobody in Little Rock, Arkansas doing that. Oh, yeah, there's, there's oil not, money. Yeah. There's oil money people. Like, it's, it's crazy, right? And so just, I want you to open your mind. There's people like that out there, okay, that will do it. And so it's insane to me. Uh, but yeah, so how do you find pre foreclosures? That's the best way. Now, how do I reach out to pre foreclosures, right? What's the best marketing channels for them? Personally, uh, I found four. I hate to tell you, like, four is the best one. So, what is it, right? Number one, no cold calling. I, this is a personal rule for me, but the, the contact rate on a pre foreclosure is so bad because they're getting calls <laughs> yeah, from loan sharks, loan servicing companies, mortgage, like other mortgage companies. Then you got the realtor. I mean, realtors sometimes go after them, sometimes not. It depends how shady they want to be. But there's so many people going after this list than every other wholesaler too. It just they all pile on, and your contact rate is going to be fifty percent less than what it really should be, because uh, we want contact rates to be 20 percent, twenty five on the good end. You're going to be at eight, nine, or ten percent at best, and it's not good. But because these sellers they don't answer their phones, they answer their texts. And so that's why SMS text blasting is really powerful. So you can SMS text blast uh, basically individually, or you can go out here and basically do like a huge platform type service. SMSact.com is the one we recommend below uh, if you're gonna send out a bunch of texts. Uh, but yeah, you can do SMSact.com and just text blast a bunch of them. Ultimately it's up to you what you wanna do with your marketing. Uh, but yeah, SMS text blasting is good. You can do it for free too. Go to Google Voice, add the phone number on there and just blast those things out. I, I absolutely love Google Voice uh, because you can send five, six out an hour over a day. That's 70, 80 texts. Over a week, that's 560 texts. Like there's probably not 560 pre-foreclosures in a week for you to be doing unless you're in like a massive city. So there's plenty of leads for you to be going after, right? Yeah, I mean, it's guys, it's this this method has been around a long time. Nobody invented it. Me and Zach didn't invent it. It's been around forever. And then it got like a little bit unpopular for a while. It's never going to change. This is one of the oldest school techniques. As long as they give out bank loans, this is always going to be a thing. And guys, take advantage of it. Like you find a lot of leads. The, the whole point of government list is where you can find smoke, you find fire. So if you know the smoke is off the government list, then you can easily find fire. You just go try to find fire without smoke. It's hard to do. So just keep it in mind. It is old school. It is boring. Is there a lot of drama with these deals? Absolutely. But you got to sort through the drama and get to the ones that want to work with you early. If you just remember that point in here, you'll do fine. And remember, I don't want you guys to be lawyer. You just got to understand the basic rules of engagement. And I will... Preface this, you cannot force people in foreclosure ever to do anything. If anything, you have to give them the benefit of the doubt. So there is no recording memorandums. There is no, if you don't do this, I'm going to do that. If they want to walk away from that deal up to the closing, you actually have to honor it. It is not yeah. worth pursuing them. So you have to be a solution. You are you have to be providing so much value they want to work with you. So just keep that in mind because there is no strong arming anybody in a distressed situation like that. Number one, it's not good business. Number two, it will never hold up in court for you. So no. just keep it in mind. No, I've, I've told everyone that. You, you, they went out, they went out to pre-foreclosure. Same thing with the elderly seller, right? Next year, one of my favorite ways, reverse driving for dollars. Just telling you guys, so you get a list of like 100 of these pre-foreclosures. What you're going to do is, you, you know what? You know, you know a lot of everyone that like getting into wholesaling, you know what a lot of their side hustles are? It's not a side hustle when I was getting started. Because I'm an old man now. You right, ready for this? Yeah. They're all doing um, basically delivery dudes or like Postmates or DoorDash. Mm -hmm. And so what they'll do is for – I'm not disparaging this at all. But for 20 bucks an hour, they will go in their car, pick up food, and then bring it to other people, right? Mm -hmm. Now, they will drive 15 minutes to a to a – the, wherever they got to go, right? To Chick fil A. They don't drive 15 minutes to another person's house yeah. for 20 bucks an hour. When, for example, you can.
Try to show some emphasis here. Grab a bunch of sticky notes. Stick them. Grab a pen. Right. Hey, this is Zach. I had a quick question about your house. Put your phone number. Slap that on a house. You could probably get 15, 20 if they're in a close range together. Get pre-foreclosure leads inbound to you. That was just for an hour. That will probably cost you 30 bucks in marketing. That in direct mail you get for free. And your mm -hmm. response rate's insane. And if you spend 20, let's do the math here. You do 20 hours a week of that. You get 80 hours to make, let's do a $15,000 deal in 80, in, uh, 80 hours. That comes to $187 an hour. If you just did 20 hours a week of this, just to do one deal. $180 an hour versus $20 an hour. Come on. And if it's a $20,000 deal, 200 bucks an hour, 250 an hour. But the amount of people that say, Zach, I have done 20 hours of reverse trying for dollars every single week for six months straight. And I haven't gotten a deal. I, I don't know these people. They don't exist. They're, they're fugazi. They're, they're fake. They're in the air. You know why? <laughs> because the people that work that hard, people that work that hard always get the deals. Because wholesaling real estate rewards those who work hard. Now, listen to what I have to say, and they get rich by doing it, guys. These sticky notes, they are $100 bills, basically. That's the way I look at them. You're just, you're making it rain over here, okay? So, yeah, you want to get rich, put sticky notes out. Here's the problem. No guru ain't going to tell you that. No one else on the internet is going to tell you how that's the, one of the best methods to get wholesaling deals. You know why? Because I don't have no affiliate on a sticky note. I can't sell a course on a sticky note. People do sell. Maybe we need Lord, to do that. I, I, need a, I need to take a breather real quick. <laughs> there is people on the internet. I got a Facebook ad the other day. Let's call it. What's the brand here? Post it. They call it the post it method. It's a new secret way to find motivated sellers that no one's ever told you about. Join my free call for a $6,000 program, and I'll teach you how to use the post-it method. Fun stuff. What? You, Bro. I, he had to stop me the other day from just I, – I just explode. I'm like, how in the world – and people pay for this. I teach hundreds of thousands of people how to do this, and there are people paying six grand to learn how to put sticky notes out. My God, I, Lord, I, I mean, I, I guess I can sell a singing lesson for seven thousand dollars because I'm, I'm a terrible singer, but it don't matter, right? I sell driving for dollars courses. I sell driving for dollars courses. I, just, I don't understand how you can do that. Like, I, I have an entire eight-minute video on freewholesaling.com for free with twenty-plus years' experience, and you guys are still paying for this course. You don't spend money on a driving for dollars course. I, I'm just telling you, I could teach a four-year-old child how to do it. It's that simple. So it's one of the easiest skill sets you can do it here. But, oh, no, no, but I got to get the highest education possible. Trust me. You just got to go out and get the guts and do it. And then you got to reach out and call people and take action. It's that simple. Talk to them, call them, whatever you're going to do. But you guys are overcomplicating the business. There is not a cure-all in gurus. If I pay X amount of dollar, the reason why you guys pay so much for Guru's courses, I've figured it out over the years. You know why? Because it makes you feel better. You know why? Because you think your problem's solved. But the reality is your problem just started because the Guru's not going to do the work for you. I don't care who you have behind it. I don't care. And then you go, crap, I'm actually going to have to work. And this course isn't quite what has cracked up what he or she told me to be. And then you go, man, I got to go out. And then you all come back to me and Zach on freewholesaling.com. That's fine. Maybe it hits more fuel, use it as motivation, whatever. Just let it go in the past and move forward. Go through freewholesaling.com, teach you how to get your first deal and up to your first 100 grand. Simple. Freewholesaling.com. So it's all about, guys. I'm telling you, reverse drive for dollars is probably one of the best ways to do it. Next is direct. It's kind of the cousin of this, right? Um, but yeah, you can send direct mail pieces out and send mail out. And you'll get wholesaling deals. I promise you this. You want to go out here and send direct mail out right now. You will get wholesaling deals with pre-foreclosures. All day. Easy. Right? Yeah. Not even a question. But here's the issue here. All right? With, especially with direct mail. It costs a lot of money. 
I, it costs a stupid amount of money to be going out here <laughs> and <laughs> sending these direct mail postcards out when maybe you don't have the money and you can do the sticky notes, you can do the texting, right? Heck, you can cold call other type of government lists, right? So yes, you can do direct mail pre-foreclosures. Is it the best ROI? Probably not if you're starting out, but it is a method and it is a way to do it. Now- <laughs> They don't read it. They go straight in the garbage. Exactly. So let's kind of talk about exactly, all right? Pre-foreclosure sellers. Okay, I think we gotta get the mind of this. Um, and we'll have you talk, because you, you've been through this more than anyone. Yeah. Let's go through the mind of a pre-foreclosure seller, right? Like what's what goes through their mind? Yeah. How do you deal with them? Because they're they're a different beast, right? So remember, you always have to come from an idea of helping them. So if you'll remember this statement, and this holds true for wholesaling. I don't know why anybody else doesn't teach this, but your job as a wholesaler is to help the seller get out of their own way. So you all have family members and friends. You're like, man, this guy or gal, just like it's the same story over and over, and they just keep repeating the same mistake. Same thing with your sellers. So if you know your jobs to help them get out of their way, you always have to focus on what is the big problem we have to solve? Because here's what everybody in free pre foreclosures is going to do. They're going to hit you with a million little distracting details that really have nothing to do with the situation. Well, my hairdresser, she charged me twice as much. And then my car broke down because I didn't put a new battery in. And it's just like, okay, you got to bring it back. Because if you let them, like, especially like me, if I was in foreclosure and with ADHD, I'm probably just going to spin you the entire time is I say, Mr. Seller, if I had a magic wand, what, how would you want to, how do you want to fix this situation? You're in control. And you got to listen very carefully and answer it. God gave you two ears and one mouth. Listen, you can only solve the seller's problem. If you listen, if you're actively talking, you don't take in data. You need as much data as possible. And I anchor in as much as I can. They go, listen, I would like, I'd like to get out of here in the next 90 days, just get whatever money I can and go live with my mom in Arizona. Okay. If I can help you accomplish that, we put something together. Does that sound like something we can do? And I'm always going to use that as an anchor because guess what? I'm going to come back in a week. Maybe I come back in a day. We do the paperwork. She's like, I don't know, man, this is too overwhelming. I don't want to do it. Remember your jobs to help the seller get out of their own way. For me to do this, we're going to have to do some things. They're going to seem a little bit unpleasant, but here's the really cool thing. I'm going to walk you through it. I'm going to be brutally honest with you. People are scared because it's a legal action. And number two, most people do not want to move. They're going to have to uproot their friends, their family, move their kids out of school. So your job is to calm them down, but you have to decide, am I making progress? Now, if you meet with somebody in pre-foreclosure three or four times, and you can't get them focused on solving the problem and they just keep repeating the same story and they smoke a million cigarettes in front of you because they will, you're going to have to make a decision and go, listen, give me a call when you truly want to get out of the situation. I, I, can, I just can't talk to you all day. And that's the painful part most of you struggle with because you try to hold on forever. They are good people, but some want help and some don't. Here's the real truth. Some aren't going to be honest with you. And they're just going to like keep, they want to talk to you. You're a good ear because you're a wholesaler and you listen, but there has to come a point where, okay, if we're not, and here's what I said, after three or four visits, if I'm not making progress, I have to look at the situation and decide, is this worth me investing another 20 or 30 hours in? And most of you struggle with that decision. So here's what you need to do. After three visits, if you're making zero progress, ask yourself, are they a chronic procrastinator? Are they going to wait all the way to the end of the auction? And here's what, if you think they are, hit them in the mouth. I go, listen, if you just want to wait till it goes to auction and get kicked out of your house, you can do that. You don't need me. If you want to make a change, let's talk now or call me when you have an epiphany and you want it to happen and you have to move on. And I struggled with that for years. And by the way, I did pre-foreclosures door to door in my first two years. Like I know every trick, they will stall Tell yourself this, not every, most people don't tell you the truth. Most gurus don't tell you the truth. Why do you think sellers are any different? Your job is to be a human lie detector and you just kind of keep walking through. But if you can't get them out of their way and they don't want to fix the problem, there's nothing you can say to them to fix it. You just have to move on to somebody else that wants your help. You leave them your contact information and maybe you follow up with them in a month or two and you move on. And most of you hold on to these people and you put like a hundred hours into them and they burn you out of wholesaling. If you can't catch them in that first hundred days, 
it is a strong sign that they're going to drag you all the way to the end and never do business with you. So if you understand that going into it, you know half the battle. When they first call you and they first get in the pre-foreclosure, that's the sweet spot because they're scared. They want help. But then they get this confidence. I'm not paying. Nothing's <laughs> happening. This is perfect. And at the end, when the vultures circle, they want you to come back in. And I always tell them, I go, listen, don't call me at the very end. There's nothing I can do. And to this day, this is exactly how we do it. It has not changed in 21 years of me doing this business. The process is exactly the same when I started in 2003 or in 2024. Don't complicate this. Catch them early. I agree. So yeah, pre-foreclosure sales are difficult. Deal with it. I just, but there's a lot of deals. And so the next big question we get with pre-foreclosure is like, what if they owe a lot of money, right? It's like, oh, what if the deal's worth, let's say, for example, 140 to a buyer and they owed 135? What do I do? No. Well, I, it's, it's, it's a math equation. Okay. I see as a beginner, I know it's confusing because I was a beginner once, but basically if they owe a lot, it's fine. You just got to take out what the contract price is minus what they owe. Easy math. I just, I know there's taxes in it, but for most cases, okay. If we're going to buy it for 150, all right. And they owe 145, they net five grand. Right. I just, it's math. So don't be, I know a lot of people are like, what if the seller has a mortgage? I can't wholesale it. Right. No, you can trust me. You can. That's it's just, they, most of them, most of them, I think yeah. 72% of households yeah. have more, some, some crazy number. Yeah. So Simple. the ones that are messy is when they haven't paid the mortgage in like two or three years. And it's a drawn out, uh, pre foreclosure. They're usually going to be upside down at that point. Not everybody, but for the most part, and it's like a simple math problem you can figure out. And by the way, well, how do I figure out how much owes it? Listen, between list REI and batch, like you can go up there. It does a pretty quick algorithm calculation on you, but you all have the ability to go in public records in that county. You can look out when they took out the mortgage and they'll tell you, I stopped paying back in January and you can just do the math on it. It's straightforward. And guys, you're kind of a guy who did four years of nothing but short sales because the market was so screwed back up from 2009 to like 11. Short sales are a nightmare now. They are, in my opinion, they are not, there's not a valid wholesaling strategy to it. Most wholesales are restricted by the bank. You have to own it for 90 days before you can even resell it. So you can't do an assignment when it comes to the short sale. There are a few exceptions. And number two on the short sales, it's, it takes an incredible amount of energy to negotiate them. And the average short sale is four to six months. And then, so we used to hire people just to do this. We use law firms, we use um, title companies. The average person that wants to negotiate a short sale now gets between $1,500 and $4,000. So like even on tight deals, it doesn't even make sense. So they did, oh, they'll take a short sale. Banks, for the most part, unless the property is an absolute nightmare, they will never approve a short sale. And by the way, a short sale, you have to qualify. There has to be a death in the family, loss of job, or a severe situation. You don't get a short sale just because you can't afford the home. That's not an out. So understanding, and by the way, short sales require to go back six months to a year on all your financial records, your tax returns, your bank accounts, and most sellers don't want to do that. It's very intrusive. It's like an audit. So when you hear short sale, unless there's a ton of, it, they usually don't make sense and the way the market is, why would a bank even discount it? Back in 2009-11, they had to because 70% of the houses were upside down. Today, it's the complete opposite. So short sales, honestly, we're not really going to, I don't know if you want to mention them, but they're just, you can, yeah. they're not a great solution. So the only way I do a short sale is if I partnered up with someone who specializes in short sale and go, hey, listen, can we just partner up on this? Or if there's money. Uh, can we have an agreement? You pay me for um, finding a lead and just uh, move on with your life. We're going to ask this. We just answered this, but like, what do we need to know if the seller is a mortgage? If the seller is a mortgage, I mean, it's most of them do. Here's the cool. If there's title issues or anything, we have a title company. Like they, they deal with that. So really, as long as they don't owe more than our contract price, we're fine. Simple as that. And sometimes guys let the title company tell you that. Like you can do a guesstimate. Like sometimes people go, hey, I owe 800000 on it. I go, I'm like, dude, it's worth two hundred. How'd you do that? So on those, it, they're not worth lifting your finger on. But like you kind of look into them. It's, it's weird how people – and remember, the idea of pre-foreclosures the way I was taught originally, they're like, Rick, these are the biggest home runs you do because people have sometimes have $100,000 equity. 
And if they don't do something, they're going to lose everything. And I'm telling you, there are people in foreclosure with equity. A lot of people are holding on their houses with those low interest rates. And they're trying to figure out how to bridge the gap. They're trying to, to get HELOC loans. They're trying to refi. And they can't. There is a lot of people behind on their mortgages right now. So this is why we're telling you about this technique. And it works really well. I agree. And so let's kind of break down exactly the next thing you know. When, when you have any situation of pre-foreclosure, okay, just know, use the title company to handle the work. This yes. is very important, okay? Title company does most of the heavy lift, lift, lifting for you. So don't be freaking out. Oh, with the bank. Oh, my gosh. Do I have to do with the bank? Does the seller have to get none? Let the title company do all the work there, right? And the easiest thing to make your life, your title company's life easier, if you're with the seller, you're working uh, locally or virtually, just ask for the last most recent mortgage statement and tell them to take a picture of the front and the back. With camera phones these days, it's really easy. And then it'll have the loan number there, it'll have a phone number on there, and then your title company will forward your seller a pre-authorization and they will call and get all the facts. And usually they want that you want your title company to call you first to tell you what, what's owed on it, here's where they are in foreclosure, and they say, how do you want to proceed? So once you have that conversation with your team, your title company, now you can reach back out the seller and you can provide alternate solutions. And remember, the idea is to create a win-win situation because if you try to hammer these people, they're not going to show up to the closing and you're just going to waste your time. So it has to be a win-win for everyone. I've had people in foreclosure ask for nothing. I've had people walk away with $150,000 in foreclosure. Everybody's case is different. So this, by the way, soon as you have an agreement, don't get overly obsessed with the contract price because a lot of it's going to be dictated on how much owed to get the property. You just want to see if they'll give you a discount. Sometimes you can't get that discount because they owe more than the, the contract price on it. But remember, you can always adjust it. But you have to have, you have to, you got to get something from your seller while they want to do it. Then give it to your title company and don't hold back on running title. The sooner you run it, the sooner you can figure it out. Sometimes there's other liens from the city, the county, and the federal level, and you could be wasting your time on that deal. So some of you try to hold back because you think you're, you don't save any money. Run the title as soon as possible. Work with your title company and do the math and see if it's going to work out. And then once you have a conversation with your title company, that's when you can reach out to your seller. And then if you need help, reach out to me, Zach, or whoever you're working with. And the idea is to provide people solutions that creates a win-win situation. It, don't be greedy because karma will take care of you on this. If you're super greedy with sellers, they just don't show up to the closing and it serves you right if they do that. Make them want to come to the closing excited. They fix a problem, they walk away with some money, they get dignity and they can move on. That's it. Simple as that, right? And so let's kind of talk about more of the marketing spin for pre-foreclosures too because marketing is the most important thing we can do here. So the, the biggest marketing spin that I can give to you is when you're talking to sellers, number one, don't act like you're targeting them. This is the same thing with probates, any type of motivated sell in general. Don't act like you are like, oh, I saw you're behind on your mortgage payment. Let me buy your house. When, when you do that, like the seller gets kind of like they get a little ticked off at you, just being yeah. honest. And they're like, what? What is wrong with you? Right. And it, it, no, it, it don't work out pretty well. So I, don't act like you're targeting the seller. I, I think that's numero uno uh, advice I can tell you is do not act like you're targeting them. My script when talking to motivated sellers in a pre-foreclosure, heck, even in, in a probate situation, is me and my partner, we're looking to buy a couple more houses in the area for cash. Are you looking to sell by chance? Simple, right? Yeah. And that the reason is, so when I first did this one door to door, we used to say, hey, I can't notice but the pending problem on your property. And then you were prepared to duck, weave, run, or bob. Because when you offend people or like you call them out publicly, you're in a bad situation. So think about your friends and your family to deal with it. Like if you truly want to get something, you're better off going, just say, hey, listen, I'm just interested in buying the house. Yeah. If they want to talk about it, then that's fine. But like when you shove it down there, like you embarrass them and then you will never get that rapport because they don't trust you. So the last thing you want to do is start off by offending them. So just say, listen, we're just looking to buy some houses for cash in the area. My partner drove by, saw your house, thought it'd be a good fit, just reaching out to you and then just go into it. The last thing you want to ever say is, I see you're in probate. 
I see you're in pre foreclosure. I see your house is getting ready to get sold because they'll just start getting in the defense. And then you're there. Remember, once people start defending themselves, they don't listen to anything you say. And the last thing you want to do is get in a defensive argument with somebody in pre foreclosure. It's not a good start. Don't do it. I'm telling you, me. So me and my partner are looking to buy a couple more houses for cash. Are you interested in selling it? Then last but not least, pre-foreclosures are a numbers game. The more leads you have, the more marketing you do, which is the more wholesaling deals we get, the more cash we make in wholesaling real estate. Duh, right? So yeah, the more marketing we do, the more wholesaling deals we get. So it's a numbers game. Ramp up the stinking numbers and we can make a ton of money in wholesaling real estate, guys. And that is how you deal with pre-foreclosures. Get rich off the huge fortune that is going to be coming down the line this year with pre-foreclosures because the, the wholesaling industry doesn't talk about them too much anymore, right? And I think it's a great opportunity. And there's more and more foreclosures happening every single month, basically, uh, since the sickness, the great sickening happened. Uh, when people start getting sick, I can't say that word, um, but it started getting nuts. Yeah, it's... Let's look at the foreclosure numbers here. And guys, all of you thinking about all these strategies to work around wholesaling, to deal with people in pre-foreclosure, if you don't have the experience and know how to deal with these people, I'm talking any type of creative financing, I don't agree with a lot of the stuff going on out there. I don't think brand new people to real estate in general or wholesaling, and you go, hey, listen, I'm just going to pay you whatever uh, you owe on it, and I'm going to do a creative or a subject to and then you're going to sell it like a wholesale deal, you're going to have some rude awakening coming because you are the responsible party. So if you sell it to someone that doesn't take care of that payment, you're going, in my opinion, you are going to be the person of targeted of interest. And I've seen these deals selling three or four times down the line. And by the way, there's people in our group right now that all they're here for is to try to grab sub subject to and Guys, the word is subject to. There's no other slang for it. It it's so predominant in every group I've ever seen. It's it's you guys are going to get so much legislation. And keep in mind, most mortgages are controlled by the United States government. They have complete control. So when they decide that you cannot do a a subject to strategy, they're going to do it through Fannie and Freddie, and they're not going to ask any of your permission. So. All these new people going out there saying, oh, I'm going to take it over and I'm going to make a quick 10 grand. It is creating a lot of chaos because you don't have the experience to do it. And so unless your partner has a ton of experience, not your coach, not your mentor, you have to be very careful because you are taking on someone's debt and you're making promises. They don't care you sold it two or three times. If it ever comes up in a lawsuit, the lawyer goes, who's the guy that reached out to you? Oh, it was Rick. Let's go ahead and depose Rick. And then the whole thing's going to come out. And basically you have to disclose everything you're doing. And it's still an argument. Can you take over someone's mortgage without like legally um, dissolving them of the debt? And I believe they're going to have out, there's so much traffic going on. That I've seen it just in our comments here. Oh, just do a subject too. If you don't know what you're doing, please don't do it. Because if someone doesn't make a payment, that poor person you helped out, now you've put them in a worse position. And you know, there's certain types of mortgage you technically can't do subject twos on. And by the way, anyone who's done a loan modification, don't do a subject two. You're going to have a problem with it. So it's already written in the paperwork. I'm just telling you guys, I like wholesaling pre foreclosures. It's a work. It's been around forever. All these little tricks and gimmicks you find to work around, they're all going to come back and eventually haunt you guys because some of you don't know what you're doing. As you become seasoned in wholesaling, you'll you'll get the gist of it. You'll understand the responsibility of it. but to this day, I just had three deals submitted to me. Like, oh, just take over the payment and give me 10 grand. I'm like, the problem is who's responsible in the end? Because eventually you're going to get an unscrupulous person that's going to take advantage of the situation. And the problem, they're going to come back to the original person that found the deal. And, oh, make 10 grand. I go, yeah, but if you have to spend 75 grand to defend yourself and then they're bringing you up on fraud charges, 10 grand is not going to look very attractive. So, guys, I see things in the future to a point. I'm not saying you can't do creative financing. You've got to be responsible about it. And if you don't know what you're doing, maybe that's a sign you probably should not be doing one. So everybody wants to make a quick buck on it. I just think we're having a problem in the industry and people need to start speaking out loud about it. So um, 
By the way, you should be consulting an attorney if you ever do a subject two. You should never do them completely blindly on your own. Um, I don't care who teaches you. You've got to understand what you're on the hook for. And remember, you have a responsibility to people. You made a promise to help them out. You didn't say, I'm going to make 10 grand and then leave you in the dust. So keep it in mind. That's all. Yeah. I mean, uh, let, let's look at the data here. You know, uh, so the reason why pre-foreclosures, it's insane to me, but like, so let's look at the data here, right? So this is from Adam Data. So we can just go here, right? Can we zoom in? So let's, I mean, 2008 was a different animal, right? Um, but let's kind of look, I mean, pre coming off 2008, you, you already saw right before anything happened, like it, that was the big one, right? And then it just started dropping, right? Duh. Yeah. And basically it, it kind of went on a bottom right here. Actually 2021 is the biggest bottom. And now we're seeing it basically double, right? It's insane to me like a doubling of this yeah. it's up 15 percent, right it's still not a low amount um but basically like in 2021 i went on record said like we're gonna double the, the amount of this list we should be going after this and they're like, oh no uh, right i'm like no we're gonna double <laughs> i'm telling you and guess what happened it increased like crazy so these are foreclosure filings and the percentage is a percentage of all homes that are in a foreclosure right and so we went from 2022 to 2023, 324 to 350. And I think we're going to be increasing again. Not because it's a bad thing, but I'm just saying like, but the, the one thing is because of interest rates, I think this is artificially lower. Yeah. Because they're 3% loans. They're doing everything they possibly can. These people that are getting six, 7% loans. They're probably going to start defaulting on them more, right? Just think about what comes along with that. The additional insurance cost, the property taxes go through the roof. And I don't know if you've been to Home Depot or, or like the big box stores in a while. Everything's brutally expensive to fix on a house now. And oh, because yeah. of this, like you got to understand, most of these people are just one paycheck away from losing their job. And when they lose their job, which we've had quite a robust job market. I mean, boy, the wheels can come off the bus super fast. These prices we put up. So typically you're going to see, I've always seen foreclosures hover around like a 1%. And if you look at this, probably the running average over a 10 or 20 year period would be around 1%. So we're way below it. But remember, nothing happens fast in real estate. A lot of people like they thought after uh, 2021 and going to 22, I go, it's just going to drop. It's not like the stock market. But once it starts, it once it starts catching pace. So we got, you go from 0 0.11, 0 0.23, 0 0.26, and then it just keeps going. It takes a lot to curve it back the other way. So remember, there's a huge delay on cause and effect in real estate. And if you understand that, people are, people always want an overnight fix for real estate. It's not. Most fixes are usually between three and five year cycles. So we're only technically coming in year two of one of the hottest real estate trends we saw in our lifetime in the last hundred years. So there's got to be some sort of hangover effect. The wild card right now is so many people got such cheap mortgages for so long and people are holding on to them like they're like these valuable gold coins. That's only going to last so long. Like eventually people want to move. The average person who has a 30 year mortgage in the United States holds it for five and a half years. Yeah. So most of these happen in 2021 and now we're in 24. So in the next 18 months, I think you're going to see a huge shift in mortgages because people just, and there's some people holding on to these cheap mortgages and they can't even afford to pay them because a lot of people, here's the other thing is I don't have the stats on it, but the percentage totally of people have. in the United States that refinance their homes and oh, use yeah. it as a piggy bank, that option is not like they're all struggling because they can't refinance their house now. So at some point they either got to make the payments, sell it or refinance it and suck up the new interest rate. And we're just kind of stuck in a weird position right now. So something's eventually going to give here. I mm -hmm. don't know what it is. I'm not making a forecast. I'm just saying, pay attention. You guys all have access to this data. Okay, cool. I agree. So uh, here's the stats we're trying to show here. Uh, U.S. foreclosures activity sees noble increase January 2024. Uh, so pretty much the big one here is, uh, let's just talk about January, right? I mean, it was up about, what's the percent here? 6% from last month and 5% from a year. So it's month over month, 6%. It's pretty good. Uh, pretty good data. So the data is showing 
Now, the data takes a little bit for it to kind of catch up, but getting interesting, right? I think we're going to see a lot more of this list, and that's why we're kind of having a conversation right now about it. So uh, let's uh, answer some questions here. Um, I did get asked, you know, is this live or pre-recording? Uh, let me show time.gov. Prove that we are always live because uh, some people will say they're live and put live in the comments. How can that be? They'll say live, and um, heck, I, I – there's even things this week people claim to be live that ain't live. It's crazy to me. No, yeah, well, it's 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 insane. It's easy to figure. Um, out. it's easy to figure out. Go to time.gov. Show if you're live or not. Boom. Simple. So can we stop asking if I'm live or not? Never pre-recording over here. Okay, you know this. Come on, get out of here. Get out of here. <laughs> Someone's always got to ask. They ask me, but when someone goes pretends to be live and they don't pull up any questions that they pretend it's live. <sighs> My Lord. It's crazy. Every time, every time I get that, I'm like, come on, man. Lucas says uh, the closest one I've done in Georgia was 21 days before a scheduled auction, but that was a pain. Oh yeah. Yeah. 80 says, uh, what's in between ZachDay.com, DMZach.com, ZachDay.com's batch. The other one's deal machine. Um, they're both great services. Um, yeah. Honestly, like, I think they both work really well, right? I, I've said there's a big difference between the two on the skip tracing quality side. I think Batch has better quality, obviously, but DMZAC.com, bang for your buck, you can't beat it. And so I'd say the majority of people are going to take DMZAC.com over D uh, ZACDATA.com, DMZAC.com over ZACDATA.com because just being the truth, like, it's just cheaper with the skip tracing. And it's not that crazy of a difference um, for most people. So shout out to Gus, five bucks. That's going to. Help me out. Appreciate it, bro. Uh, that'll buy me a coffee. I like it. Appreciate it, man. Uh, Alexa says, hey, Rick and Zach, big fan. I watch your YouTube videos almost every day. I have so many questions, but since the video is strictly about pre-foreclosures, uh, I'll stay on topic. In the process of wholesaling pre-foreclosure properties take a little longer. Uh, what kind of issues pop up? They will take probably a little longer through title, but it's still the same process of locking up the deal. I'm here to tell you, so depending on what state, I'm not going to get in the legalities of, of how, but like in Florida, basically when you buy a house, you control the deed. Whoever controls the deed is the owner. In some states, you do a deed and trust where like the bank holds the deed. And if you're in that type of state, stage, state, the bank can actually facilitate a much faster foreclosure because they're in control. So in Florida, till the day they sell your property, you're the owner, you're the decision maker, you can do whatever you want. So as long as there's enough money to fund the deal, meaning your cash buyer is paying enough, the, the mortgage payoff with all the late fees and the attorneys is low enough, and you can make your fee in there, they can actually go pretty quick. So the longest process is getting the payoffs and getting the final numbers, because a lot of times they got to reach out to an attorney and a law firm to get the final payoff. And you can technically buy a house in pre-foreclosure right up to the closing date, but it gets hairy at the end. The problem at the end, there's usually very little money left into it. So as much as we want to gripe about it, a pre-foreclosure can close much faster than any other type like a probate. A uh, pre-foreclosure will close faster. Why? Because the owner's always in control. When it comes to a probate, they're trying to determine the owner um, through basically the court process to make sure their wishes are followed out through their last will and testament. And that takes time. So pre foreclosure, in essence, if you have a cooperative seller and you can get a payoff, how long does it take a payoff? The most it ever takes is two to three weeks because you got to go through a law firm. So everything can be done in under 30 days. So it's that simple. So it's really the only complication is when they owe too dang much money. Like, uh, sometimes people have, uh, alimony liens, they have child support liens, they have IRS liens. So you, a lot of times when people are behind on their pre-foreclosure, they're behind on a lot of other bills. Now, depending on what state is, if they have an exemption because it's their primary home and there's laws in the state to protect it, it's usually a good thing. If it's an investment property, it's more risky because anybody, even credit cards can come out and tag a lien on that property. So it's important to run the title as soon as possible. If it takes two to three weeks to get it back, then you look at a math problem and you make a decision. If somebody owes 600 grand and the property's worth 100, just say, just wish them the best and move on. There's nothing you can do. You're not a miracle worker. And I don't want to hear about a subject two person that can make that work. 
you can write a contract, but you're not going to make any money and you're going to put them in a worse position when they started out. So sometimes there's just only so many things you can do. And by the way, sometimes people get lines of credit and, and second mortgages and they lie on applications and they get much more of a debt on the property than it's worth. I see it happen all the time. So there are deals. They owe 300 is worth hundred. There's nothing you can do with that property. I don't care. I don't care how creative you are. It's never going to make financial sense. You're going to need 30 years to fix that problem. The house typically needs to be foreclosed and they need to start over with their life. Yeah. You're not wrong. I Foreclosures are easy, guys. The homeowner is usually in control till the day of the auction. So as long as you have a great relationship and they're being cooperative and they're motivated tellers, it should go well. If they're trying to control it, manipulate it, it will be an absolute nightmare. You do not want to work with those types of people in pre-foreclosure. Exactly. Justin's got a good question. Um, do I have to tell the buyers that the sellers are in a pre-foreclosure? They're going to know. They're like, going to know. They're, they're they don't know. care, like, though. It's not like care. a... Who cares? No, if there was a code violation or, you know, some type of situation. Yeah, sure. But like pre-foreclosure people, they're usually going to be behind in their tax bill. They're going to have code violations and they're going to have multiple liens. They hit every category you want for a motivated seller. Your job is to help work through them. Here's the type of sellers that don't work in pre-foreclosure. Say the house is worth 300000 they owe two seventy five. They go, I'll sell it to you as long as I walk away with a hundred thousand dollars cash, Rick. I'm just like, they don't get it. And honestly, you can talk to your blue in your face. It's a simple math. Like I write down on a piece of paper. Here's what it's worth. Here's what you owe. How do you want me to get you a hundred thousand dollars? Do you have a, a really nice uncle? And those people, if I can't get across to them two or three times, I just kind of move on and give my information if they ever come back to planet earth. And here's simply what you guys can say to people like that. Mr. Seller, let me see what the house can afford. I get it. That's your wish list. I want millions of dollars too with no work, but let's, and I always bring it back to the house. Let's see what the house can afford. Houses are only worth so much guys, but the guy that, or gal that wants a hundred grand when there's maybe two or three grand left in it for him, I don't spend a lot of energy on them because it's never going to happen. And they tell themselves this crazy story. And the only thing that's going to set them straight is reality. And I, I don't, I just don't want to spend a lot of time on people like that. I agree. So, uh, yeah, do, do buy, yeah, you can tell a buyer. I don't think it's that big of a deal. So they're, they're going to find, like, who cares? Like, as long as they're getting a good deal. And that's usually why they're getting a good deal because I got somebody in foreclosure, pre foreclosure, and it's got some work that needs to be done on it. Exactly. But, uh, Alexa, if you have a lot of questions, you want to get them answered, you want to message me and Rick. Hop on our uh, live events. Uh, just go to Flip Dork Plus. That is where it's at. Uh, FYI, we are closed on Flip Dork Plus, unfortunately. Um, we still got to make sure that we don't go above our capacity for the event. Yeah. Um, so we do have a wait list right now. Uh, we send an email out to, uh, I think, 10 people. Let, they, they, 10 people wanted to add Flip Dork Plus, so we put 10 more people back in on the mm -hmm. wait list. So now it's back shut down unfortunately um but yeah hop on the wait list see if you can hop on for the event uh no guarantees anymore on it but uh if you want to join the wait list go to flipper plus and uh see if you get in you should be you eventually will probably get in on flipper plus over time because the next event will will up the capacity don't worry um but it's capacity of how many questions we can answer we we gotta see um if it gets too much then we won't do it um but yeah but uh, yeah, we got some jv deals so we gotta let those people in too so yep. Make sure we got the right way. So uh, let's see here. Let's answer some one-on-ones. If you want to hop on, talk to me, Rick, in one-on-one, absolutely for free. Uh, let's go here and show you how to do it. So all you got to do here is go to Wholesaling Houses for Real. This is our free real estate wholesaling Facebook group. Let's go here. And uh, we got emojis on uh, Twitch. You know our Twitch streamers? It's funny. Somebody asked, can you stream on Twitch? I said, sure. We'll figure out how to do it, but we'll do it. And now we're Twitch streamers. So interesting. All right. So uh, let's go here. Uh, you go to the feature tab on the top. Plus 133,000 people. Click the feature tab. You click the streamer link right there. Boom. And you can hop on, talk to me and Rick absolutely for free. So uh, let's talk so we can do to help you guys out from the best wholesaler possible. So, uh, First and foremost, uh, Tyrese, what's up, man? 
Hey, how are you guys doing? I want to thank you guys for, you? for for helping out, Rick. How are you doing? Um, Good, man. Fan. I'm just starting off. You guys are freaking awesome. I want to say that first. Um, but popping in my question, so I've been spending my last couple of weeks pulling um, probates. I live in Pennsylvania, so I'm pulling any probate I can get my hand on for counties that obviously fit your guys' market description. So specific to my situation right now, I have a probate, the lady, um, no mortgage on the house, house is actually in good condition. So I called her last night and um, she was like, hey, I've, I've had like seven offers on this house, all wholesale offers, basically trying to get a discount. So I was like, all right, well, let me understand that. And then not just throw another offer that she's going to say no to and hang up. So I'm kind of thinking this might be a novation type of deal. Do you guys have, I just watched the videos you guys had on novations on YouTube, just check them out right now. Um, but can you guys kind of walk me through that a little bit more? Just because there's not as much content that I see from the quote gurus and everything else on novations. Do you of guys course. recommend yeah. that for this is for great, a man. Yeah. So I have a couple of questions for you. Um, how much money in the renovations are you going to put up to buy the house? So uh, she actually wants me to do a walkthrough Saturday. Hmm. I don't want to drive up to Pittsburgh and do the walkthrough. I'm down in New York. Um, so know, but how much in away. renovations are you going to put? So she said that. Renovations essentially are going to need. She said four new windows and a water heater. But other than that, she said that she well, could gonna, be lying. With she's going to have to flip the house on innovation. So are, are you going to put thirty, forty grand of your own money into it? Um, out of your own bank account? No. no, no. But are you? No. Then why do you want to know the innovation? Well, because it's it's not lining up to be a wholesale deal from what I yeah. So anyway. innovate it, put forty grand into it, and put it on the market. You can pay the the holding cost on it, right? Um, again, I don't know much about innovation, so you're kind of talking so, from so, perspective like, that so I do so understand. So respectfully, why we don't talk about innovations is you probably don't want to put 50 grand in the renovations, have the risk. What if the seller okay. says, I don't want to, I don't want you dealing with my house anymore. All right. Hey, well, dude, that, kinda, that kind of clears. You don't want to be too. dropping 60, yeah. 70 grand, all these risks. You're putting power right. of attorneys on here and you have all this risk and maybe the property doesn't even sell. Now you're out 40 grand on the deal. Right. You just lost 40 grand on a no risk wholesale deal innovations right. man let, let me let me cut in here so <laughs> i i'm excited you got started with it i'm excited i just like don't how long have you uh like been looking at our material be honest with me um i just found you guys january and i've i've really went through free so, time twice now if so. you find our videos on ovation we basically tell you don't ever do them it, it's right it's just a trap like it's okay there is no shortcut so i want you to refer back to it so okay. I love that you're doing probates. I love it. So hopefully you've studied everything I said. The biggest thing yeah, I teach people probate in probates, guys. you just proved my point. She has seven people and they're all just slamming her with offers, right? Uh -huh. Be the guy that doesn't give her an offer. Just right. talk to her because it takes five or six touches to find out if the deal is going to work. Why? Because you got to be a human come probate. Somebody died in the family. Mm -hmm. right. Now everybody deals with death differently. So most people just want to attack price in the first two minutes. If right. you don't go after a price in the first phone call or two, they're like, what are you doing? You're right. being different from what everyone else does. Here's the secret. If it's just price, there's nothing you can do. You'll never win. Right. So I don't want you to compete on that. You got to make right. a decision if it's worth meeting with her because maybe she is just price conscious. She is move on. And that's all you can do. A novation and a probate, Honestly, is one of the worst situations you can ever. You okay. already have legal maneuvers going on, and if you're wow. going to record a POA and do a hundred thousand dollar lien, yeah. you're I'm most already screwed. Yeah, screwed you're, you're like, most likely going to get sued in that event. So I would never right. ever advise to do it. I would just talk to her and just see what her motivating factor. If it's purely price, then just wish her the best to move on, man. Like, right? And you're going to get rejected you more that. than you get accepted. But like, right. I don't want you to compete on price. So when you're the guy who doesn't offer a price right off the bat and find out what they truly want to accomplish and what's going on with the house. Listen, for the repairs she's told you, I guarantee there's a much longer list than that. Right. So if you know Thank that you. going into it, just try to talk to her and see, remember, what do you want to accomplish with this? Here's what I want people to tell me. I want to get the house sold. I know I'm not going to get top dollar, but I don't want to worry about it. I want to know it's a done okay. deal. And I want to move on from that. That's most of my probate deals. If it's just a bidding war, yeah, might as right. well just put it on MLS and just skip this entire right. process. And remember, what's your catchphrase? What are you going to tell them different that every other investor hasn't told her yet? What's what's my so secret catch? 
I try to craft my pitch, obviously using MCPT and everything else you guys preach. Um, but I kind of tell her, hey, I'm providing you a service. I am um, I talk in terms of what she's going to want to hear. So I told her, I listen, like you say, especially for probation, it was like a 45-minute conversation. But she said, I don't want people in and out the house. I don't want yeah. a real tour. I, so I, I kind of crafted my pitch based on that. Yeah. But everything you guys both just said makes sense. You're not – I learned from you, Rick. You're not going to be able to close everybody. So that's kind of like – Again, you, you don't, kinda you don't waste effort on people that don't want to do it. And right. also, down, make sure you download my probate letter. Like uh -huh. my, my secret – it's not a gimmick. It's in there. I'm okay. giving you guys an advantage that no other wholesaler or real estate uh, agents that can, you can give close. Them. You can close a probate while it's in probate. What if I could show you how I could actually get you funded before the probate's done? Is that okay. something you want to talk to me about? Remember, you got to right. have like a hook and help because everyone else is going, what's the price? What do you want for it? What do you want for it? And you're right. just like, hey, what do you want to accomplish with this? Right. And, and then they always go, well, the probate's complicated. I can deal with a lawyer. I go, well, oh, listen, what if I could show you how to kind of cut through the red tape on this? And okay. I've learned a technique to where you can actually get paid before the probate's done. That way you don't have to think about this house all the time. Is that something you're interested in talking? You have to be a difference maker because everybody else, right. if it's just price, you'll never win. Right. And at the hey, end, here's what most guys. people say in probate to me. They go, Rick, you definitely weren't the best offer, but you were the best buyer for our house. Right. And that's all. If you can get that endpoint done. How you engage is the fun you get to go through and learning the process. But like right. when it's just price, 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 go, okay, God doesn't want me in this transaction. I'm going to go find someone that needs right. my help. Right. And that makes hundred percent sense. But she's going to need help. The house has issues. She doesn't want people. She, she's out of it. state too. That's where I was kind of. There like, you go, really man. It's like that. a like triple said, parlay there. It. She's so all the way in Arizona. Tyrese, focus on what she wants to accomplish and right. use your two years, what God gave you and carefully listen to it. And write it down. And when she goes off course and go, listen, Susie, remember you told me, you told me, remember you, I treat people like a child because that's what you have to do. You go, this is what you want to accomplish, <laughs> but we got all this drama in the middle. The only way I can accomplish what you want is here's how we need to do it. If okay. you're on board for that, we can do it. If you want people parading through your house and you want endless realtors and you want bidding wars and inspections. You have the right to do that, but like, it's not going right. to be fun and I'm not going to participate in that process. So, and if I thought your house qualified for that, I would tell you to do it. She okay. needs a no hassle sale. That's fair. And you will respect her wishes. And right. then I'll show you some of the secrets. So you don't have to, net, we can cut through the red tape and make this simple and easy for you. If that's a good fit, most people go with probate because you make your super you do what you say and you're providing them a service that nobody else is providing. If it's just price, dude, she's doing you a right. huge favor. Hey, thank you. You just kind of cleared that one up. I probably, because it That's largely it. seems like it is just price with her. So that, thank you for that. And um, yeah. sorry about the novation question. Like I said, no, I no, no. I'm just telling you like the, the novation, novations, novations would be the biggest nightmare in that deal. Right. And actually that you have a lawyer working on the title and everything, it would put you right. in the crosshairs it's for a lawsuit. Okay. Thank you. Hey, you just, like is, I said, I, you guys put out the truth. Some 60 grand, man. Like it, it's right. so risky. Right. And you guys tell the truth. Other guys don't say that. So I appreciate that. No, but um, you know why? Because novation of... sounds super sexy on paper, don't they? This sounds amazing. Right. They, there's, there's huge catches with it. You know, right now in the, like the state of Florida, novations are so frowned upon. The uh, the title companies they sniff them out in a heartbeat. They don't yeah, want to insure them anymore. They don't want to okay. do them because they have so many lawsuits on people that are okay. upset. Pairing up with a distressed homeowner and recording legal documents that you don't understand. If they don't get what they want, they're coming after you, and you're right. completely in the crosshairs. And more than half of novations never work out. Right. And people <laughs> record legal documents. That's called defamation of the title. And it's an extremely expensive lesson. Yeah, I don't, I don't want any of those headaches. And so they can prove damages. They go, well, I couldn't sell my house because he screwed my title up and he didn't unwind it for six months. And the judge goes, that's $15,000 a month. They multiply it and you have no that's recourse. Right. And I see it happening all over the place. Novations are a natural strategy with time and experience. You'll find the right situation. It's like, listen, I can't buy this for wholesale. I got one of my buyers. I'm just going to replace my contract with that. And then he'll take care of me on another deal. That's how innovation is supposed to work. Yeah, but partnering right. up with distressed home sellers and putting huge amounts of money at risk for someone that's delusional in the price to begin with. Right. We don't teach any of that because I know yeah, it's no. a disaster. You guys are going to be crying all the way. 
but it sounds that really good. And the amount of success rate on novations, the problem is once you record a document, you have to be willing to unwind it. And um, I'm doing deals right now where we have to go hire attorneys to unwind like the uh, novation gurus stuff all over the uh, nation. Right. Like wow. ridiculous. So I love that you're excited about wholesaling, but just remember, just be, you can offer so many more service than anybody else in probate. And listen, right. not everyone's going to say yes, just accept yeah. it. It's like, okay. But the ones are strictly priced. Go, okay, have a nice day. Right. So, She's got um, challenges. So take your time with her. Find out. Right. You got to make a decision if it's worth driving over there. I agree with you. That's a little bit of right. a drive for uh, someone. Yeah, so that's, that's, that's kind of why I'm glad I, I was able to hop on in front of you guys today. Thank you for that answer. Um, Second part of my question before I uh, hop off is, what would you say um is like the best for like long-term success? Obviously trying to generate inbound leads would be huge. So I know you guys are big on JVing and referrals, bandit signs. Is there anything like outside of that that maybe you guys would, you know, kind of be able to offer me? JVing's gonna be huge, man. Like I mean okay. go, go we got, we got people. people in our group that just I mean like, they make an entire living like, off of it. Tyrese man, if you went to wholesaling houses for real with 133,000 people, do you think you could find 12 people out of 133,000 people to send you one deal this year? Right. Yeah, 100%. That's 100 grand. That's 100 grand. Right there. Yeah. Yeah. 12 people out of 133,000. Right. And I actually just joined your Facebook group. So thank you for that. Right? The resources yeah. connecting us. Hey, I'm Tyrese. I'm in this area. I have X buyers. I have these many buyers. Here's my phone number. Just put your phone number. Right. You can block people if they're annoying. Trust me. <laughs> so just 12 people. That's one $10,000 deal. I did. I did JVs when I started out and it was just, it was, it was really good. Zach, and I know last time I on the same journey with me and it was, it was a lot of fun. Um, I don't really need to do it. So I do, you know, JVs with you guys all over the country, which we right. had a lot of fun doing that, but it's people are like, yeah, I don't understand it. I go, listen, just, if you both have a common goal in the interest and you want to move a property, sometimes two beginner minds better than one like beginner mind. And that's right. And I typically find people that, have the same hustle and the same determination as me. And like, they go, listen, I just want to learn and make money while we do it. If you learn and make money in wholesaling, I don't care how you do it. I just think right. it's a huge win. So the last thing I want to do is people wholesale for years and never make a dime. You're not, you just, you're, you have a mental block. It's not that wholesaling doesn't work. It's a mental block. And 100%. So you're on the right path. Just keep going. hundred percent. Hey, uh, I want to thank nice you guys place. again for helping us out. You guys put all this free stuff. So thank you guys are awesome. I do want to ask one last thing. Um, I'm pretty good with acquisitions. If you guys like, you guys need any help in your operation, like obviously I don't want to be paid. I just want experience. I'm working under the biggest in the game. Would you know that would be the Paris, best way to get experience? Paris, you're. I don't hire entrepreneurs. Right. Um, I'm not even. I, I'm just looking for an opportunity Paris, to just, you I know, don't learn. Hire entrepreneurs. Well, that's a compliment to you, by the way. It is a compliment. I like, got you. You're somebody. That will leave in four years after you make a quarter million a year with me to do your own thing. And then you're going to hire I your need own a guy people. with three kids and a wife that wants to make their 250 grand a year and they just love the easiness of it. And then they don't. Right. Do and I, I think that honestly, God, I could fall in that category. I have my kid, I have my girlfriend. That's so why I'm kind of looking, you know, I'd, I'd be more than willing to not even be hired on. Just, you know, That's like right. I said, just, just email an offer me. to. How about you email please, me? Can, email can me I get an email? I got to see if you're an entrepreneur or not. I don't yeah, but we, we got to see if you actually listen. I, I watch what people do. I, I'll i listen to what you say, but what people do. Please. I know, but like, Can I get an email I'll ask if, like for I said, your track I would record and I want to see everything because if you truly want to be in it, you got to show me you can do deals. Like, we can talk right. about this all day long, but. Right. Um, no, please. I, like I said, I'll, I'll work for free. I just want to be able to prove I have worth and I have value I can add. And like I said, I know this alone. Um, Just, it, it is difficult, as you well know. It's like joining a team and being able to send that team. I have no problem to do. And you might not like me and Zach if you work for us. Uh, Zach, I can tell Zach been on videos how he gets, and he would be the type of boss who would just motivate you to do better. And Rick, I'm obviously, pretty I don't, nasty I don't yesterday. Know. I had a guy we had a twenty five thousand dollar <laughs> deal, yeah. backed out of the deal, wholesaled himself, cut the title company, called the guy up man to man, say, well, "What are you going to do? We signed a JV. He went behind my back." And, uh, right, and that's grimy type things of got, stuff. Things like, got I am a nice guy. I, I ain't super sweet Zach at that point. We got the deal done. Right, we're tomorrow. Right, we're gonna we're, we're gonna get split. But I, I feed my guys, so uh, I'm not. Can, I, can I get an email? Like I said, I'll, I'll reach out to you guys 100. Reach 100%. out to portofoot.com. I'll send you um, 
not me or Rick, what, but someone else will have a talk with you. And guys, this what is, is an invitation for everyone. Support to at flipwithrick.com. Thank you. I don't hire entrepreneurs. So if you, you find out you are one, you will not be hired. Support at flipwithrick.com. Yep. yep. Thank you. You guys are awesome, man. Thank you. Like what you're doing really, it's helped me out like hundred percent. It's helping a lot of people out. Okay, Thank you, Terry. Go, go and apply it, man. You got it. Oh, like it. So, uh, yeah. What I mean by is we don't hire entrepreneurs is we don't hire people that are going to take our information and leave the company in two years. Now, could you be, I don't know. We have a very good process of figuring it out and we'll talk about it. Um, but yeah, so, uh, we'll talk about that at the Flipper uh, live event too, for yeah. the scaling part. Um, but yeah, you guys are excited. Go to fearlessly.com, join the waitlist Flipper plus or send me a deal and you join for free. But, uh, that's it, guys. Make sure you smash that like button, subscribe, and we'll see you soon. This is Zach Kinn signing out. Rick Kinn signing out.